Welcome to the Deer Talk Now podcast. Today I'm joined with Ian Sanchez, member producer of our TV team, video team. You might recognize his hand. Do this, Ian. He is the guy. He's responsible. He's the one who has been uh, cornering me, jumping out of dumpsters, uh, <laughs> diving off of rooftops to ask me the random uh, whitetail facts of the day. Give me one random whitetail fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the voice. That's the voice you guys have heard. Uh, thank you for joining us. We very much appreciate all your support. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, wherever podcasts are uh, dropped, or if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, we really appreciate it. YouTube people, please like and subscribe. We're only like a couple hundred away from 150,000. We very much appreciate your support. And all of our sponsors, our great sponsors, please patronize them because they're the ones who are bringing you this this podcast. So Ian, today, what do we have? Today, we're looking at a few questions that you composed that yep. you searched for. Yep. These are some of the most commonly asked questions that you found on Google. And I'll just go ahead and throw the first one at you here. Yeah, let me preface that just a little bit. So um, I was doing some Google Analytics on uh, deerandeerhunting.com and these questions basically came up time and time again and um, searched questions. So they're actual real questions from deer and deer hunting viewers, watchers, subscribers. So I'm gonna let you go yeah. with them and then I'm gonna, I do have some notes, but I'm gonna try to answer them best I can. Okay. This is a very broad question, but okay. what kills the most white-tailed deer? What kills the most white-tailed deer? What is funny about that question or ironic is that that is the, exactly how it was written. So if you go into Google, that question is typed that what kills the most white-tailed deer is typed numerous times. So we talked about this just recently, I think on a random white tail fact of the day, um, as far as efficiency, um, because that question is so broad, broad that I have to break it down. So if you go by efficiency, what was the answer? I'm, I'm testing you. Efficiency. What's the most efficient white tail predator? We just did this one. I think it's the bear. Yes, black yeah, bear. Black, black bear. bear. Yeah. You just remember Dwight Sh Schrute? Yep. Black bear. <laughs> yes. No, the black bear is the most efficient, but what kills the most uh, deer? I'm going to actually go through all these. What kills the most deer are coyotes. And um, basically because, I'll give you uh, a guess on that one, why would it be coyotes when you're looking at all the predators? Is it because of just the amount, like, I'd always assume because they're everywhere. It's not just limited to the states that hunters are in. They're in states that exactly. people don't even hunt in. Exactly right. 49 states have coyotes. Yeah. So there's 19 different subspecies of coyotes in North America. They're found in just about every state, and they're found wherever whitetails are found. And, and it's next to the whitetail, the coyote is the most adaptable animal that we know of. And it's almost impossible to eradicate. It's almost impossible to manage. So if you look at, um, I tried to find the numbers here, and it's really, really difficult when you're talking about a coyote because a coyote is, uh, it's not a managed species. It's an unmanaged species because there are so many of them. But if you look in just the continental United States, there's about 5 million coyotes. So you say, well, that's not that bad. There's 30 million whitetails. There's not that many coyotes, but they're just so prolific. And they're basically, they're good hunters. So they can kill, if you look, um, if we're talking regionally, the coyotes can be very efficient predators. If you look like in the southeast, places like the Carolinas, uh, Georgia, Mississippi, Texas, uh, some of those places, those coyotes can really get a stranglehold on a deer population. Um, it, it, do they cause massive losses? No, but they can be a problem. And then you get in a bigger state, it's not so much of a big deal like up here or maybe the Northeast. Yes, they're killing deer. But a couple other things I found out is if you look at, like I said, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, um, deer, whitetails can account for 40% of a coyote's diet, diet in local areas. Wow. So that tells you a lot. I mean, mostly you think of a coyote, they're eating what? Mice and birds and whatever they can get their hands on. Just small game, yeah. Small, small things. Yeah. Uh, either even they'll leave it, they're, they're omnivores, they'll eat anything. Yeah. Um, but in some other areas, like I said, that that's not going to be that high. Yeah. But um, that's an interesting uh, answer. 
I, I think probably for a lot of people, and I probably think it might have surprised you a little that it I, was a coyote. I honestly thought it was cars. I thought, I thought you know, because we've just been talking a lot about you know deer getting hit by cars here at the office. I would have assumed just that would have been it. But coyotes, yeah, that's it's it's. I kind of got a question for you here about this. Mm-hmm do coyotes hunt in numbers or is it more of like a solo thing? Do they learn from each other? Mm. Um, mostly opportunists, yeah. but mostly, but not in numbers. And we'll get to uh, an interesting wrinkle on that once you go down these questions. Cool. But um, mostly opportunists, mostly by themselves. Yeah. Um, and that is basically because they're op- opportunistic. Um, they're, I, I wouldn't say broad brush in the United States that coyotes are, you know, actively hunting deer. It's more of a, what I mean by that is it's more of a, a, a localized thing. You get in some of these states and there's a ton of deer, like in Texas, for example, there's a ton of deer, the fawning uh, period comes and they're going to make hay where the sun's shining, right? Yeah. So then, then they're going to be real efficient there but to answer your question no it's mostly yeah they're they're obviously they're going to teach their pups just like a a wolf would or a cat would okay um but it's not the same as as wolves i just gave it away or (laughs) or mountain lions okay well well, that's a pretty that is a pretty broad question i'm going to move on to the next one here yes how many deer do black bears kill each year and i had to look this up because this this piggybacks on the uh, random white tail uh question you gave me yeah a couple weeks ago Um, so I have to back my way in this, like I probably do every question. Um, black bears are the most efficient predator that we know of. And that includes wolves, gray wolves, timber wolves, same, same animal, uh, includes wolves, includes mountain lions, it includes coyotes, the black bear for a period of time. And that's about the first 10 to 14 days of a fawn's life. The most efficient predator is the black bear. Yeah. So, so a thing that a fawn has to evade where there are black bears, uh, a fawn has to evade that. Or I shouldn't say a, a doe is going to have to basically have the good fortune of having her fawns in an area where maybe she's hiding them from the black bears. But in in certain studies and in certain areas, up to 80% or more of an entire fawn crop can be taken out by black bears. Wow. So two out of 10. That's That's quite a few dead fawns. <laughs> in just in a two-week period. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's all over an entire state or anything like that. It's localized, you know, population. So you could be looking at... Now, when you look at this... Actually, I got some numbers there for you. Um, when you look at black bears... Okay, I'm going to add another question for you. See, that you're giving me questions. I'm giving you questions. I like it. Where would you think most of the black bears in the United... In continental United States would reside? I'm in the continental U.S.? Yeah, Alaska. Alaska you can't, Alaska, uh, I'm sorry, you can't count Alaska. Okay, okay, okay. You can't count Alaska. I'm going to probably go with Montana or Idaho. Okay, you actually got one of them right, Idaho. So if you look at um, the Maine states, oh, well, I just give away number one. Maine, <laughs> 45,000 black bears. Oh, my gosh. Lots of black bears. <laughs> Wisconsin, 25,000 black bears right here where we're living. Uh, 20,000 in Idaho, 20,000 in Washington, 15,000 in Minnesota. Wow. So, and then, but if you look at other places like the Carolinas and um, Florida, I know you've lived in Florida. Yeah. You wouldn't think, are black bears a problem? They're a They're a very big problem. And not just out in like, you know, the south or the north. It's Orlando, central, like they're a big problem in the cities. Yeah. Huge problem. Yeah. They have 5,000 black bears in Florida. And it's and some people estimate, some biologists estimate at maybe 10. I mean, a lot of black bears in Florida. There's no hunting. Yeah. There's no natural predators. Yeah. So the populations are just skyrocketing. And there's a lot of hogs, wild hogs in Florida. There's a lot of deer in Florida. Um, some of the best deer hunting I've ever experienced. Yeah. And uh, in other things. But in those areas where they have whitetails, I know they have really hard time with f- uh, fawn recruitment. Mm-hmm. Um, again, localized small populations. You're not going to find that with uh, recruitment on large. I, I always have to preface that on large regions, recruitment, even with coyotes. You think, oh my gosh, there's so many coyotes. Actually, some of the studies that I, I think it's uh, Mississippi State University is that 
actually the recruitment levels go up. So that's God's way of saying, okay, yes, we have a problem here. Well, we're just uh, ramping things up and the recruitment's going to be a lot better. Naturally taking care of itself. Yeah. 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 So that's interesting. So that's uh, black bears. Uh, Now back to the question, how many deer do black bears get? Okay. So I said about two out of 10 in areas where they're rife with them. Uh, The silver lining is that that's a very short window and it's mostly fawns uh adult deer some but not many and um a couple other notes i wrote down there is black bears are a problem in 40 states or i should say they're they are populated in 40 states so they have to think about it um about 600,000 black bears in the united states and uh, uh hunters trappers legal methods we take about 50,000 black bears so the percent every year Every year, That's but a good the amount. percentage is pretty small. If you look at that percentage, what is that, like 10 or 11 percent? Um, sure. You know, so it's it's a small number when you compare it to, like, how many deer do we take? You know, we kill 6 million deer out of 30 million. So, I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it's the percentages are a little bit different. Yeah. So so that's black bears. Um, how many black bears, how many deer do black bears kill? I don't know what the n- total number would be. I, we'd probably have to run those numbers. But, um, again, I think the thing that you should probably remember is that it's mostly uh, centered on a very short window of a deer's life. And there's got to be populations of black bear and deer that we don't know about that could also be participating in that as well. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Next question for you. Okay. I always have to have your finger coming with it. <laughs> All right. That'll, that'll get, get me more on my toes. Yeah. Keep you keep you on your feet there. How many deer do wolves kill each year? Okay. This, you know, for me, this is a very uh, near and dear to my heart topic because wolves are so popular in modern. Uh, and there's been, it's been the most divisive wildlife management issue, I think. That it's we've pretty faced. heated. Yeah. Because wolves are pretty and they look like dogs and yada, yada, yada. Mysterious spirit animal. Oh, an elder Leopold, fierce green fire. Yep. No disrespect whatsoever. What I'm saying is that the wolf is no different than the black bear, is yeah. no different than the mountain lion. It's a wild natural resource that should be managed, and it's yeah. not being managed. Um, how many deer do they kill? We don't know. Again, this one, I'm a, a kind of a cop-out. We don't know the the total number of deer that are taken by wolves but we do know through some studies is that on average um an adult wolf will eat about 20 deer a year so that means you know you you so we know there's sixty thousand wolves in the united states right um Oh, well, I should say the United States and Canada. So there's 60,000 wolves. They're certainly not endangered, like people say. There's plenty of wolves. And a timber <laughs> wolf and a gray wolf is the same thing. Um, but if you if you crunch those numbers, that's like, what, 1.2 million deer? Yeah. That's a lot. That is a I lot. Mean, that's a lot of deer. So how many w- deer do wolves kill every year? Over a million. Yeah. Um, and where are they being killed? I know that was your next question. Um, yeah. Where are they being killed? Um I take Canada out of the equation because, you know, Canada is vast and it's wild and it's it's the north, wild, great wild north. But if you look in places like, um, I think I wrote this down too. I'll ask you, where do you think, not counting Canada, where are the most wolves in the United States? In the United States, uh, I'm, again, I'm going to say Montana or Wyoming. Think closer to where you grew up. Really? Mm-hmm. Minnesota? Minnesota. Minnesota? Yeah. One. About, about 3,000. I, I would have believed that. And that, those numbers could be higher. About 3,000 in Minnesota. They say 1,000 here in Wisconsin. I know it's more than that. Um, so if you look, um, yes, uh, out west they have some. Yeah. Idaho, Idaho ranchers have problems with them. Colorado has problems with them. Montana, they're, they're, they're making their way down. Um, but, you know, if they're killing... A million deer, uh, you know, uh, across the country. I say in Minnesota, you take what? What did I say? Uh, Three thousand. Yep. Three thousand wolves times twenty. That's uh, sixty thousand deer. Yeah. In in the north woods of Minnesota, (laughs) 
you know that's a big there's that's a big a chunk of, of them de- yeah. not, that's a big chunk of deer. a lot of that forestry up there is all thick thick stuff that deer don't really old growth forest yeah just stuff there's not a lot of deer up there did you hunt up there never yeah. never i am familiar with people who have yeah. and they don't come out with anything crazy they can still it's still huntable it's not right. like there aren't deer there but it's just a different kind of environment for them to move through and I've, the same for the wolves too i've hunted northern wisconsin i actually heard my first wolf in 1995 i think it was. how did you know it was a wolf in that oh I'm just curious god like, it was like i've never heard a wolf so i was bow hunting this would have been october i'm pretty sure it was 1995 yeah. and this would have been bayfield county wisconsin which is all the way up you yeah. know by lake superior and um it starts getting dark out and this wolf's i mean it was like you talk about right to the marrow of your spine yeah it just put hair on the back of my neck because he was 100 yards away you know that that real (laughs) deep howl yeah and that's what i knew i'm like this ain't no coyote kind of not like a bark or anything like that. it It was was a howl howl. it was a howl that you hear probably when you're watching a movie that's pretty cool and they insert you know a wolf howl yeah that's what it sounded (laughs) like and back then they were very there weren't many of them yeah now they have problems with them up there um and i won't go off too much off on a rabbit hole here but um i've written about it a lot in my blog a lot about wolves, a lot about management. The thing about wolves here in our home state was it became a political hot potato. We were supposed to have a population of 250 before management occurred. Right. And it got tied up in the courts, and it was conservatives versus liberals, and the liberals had the, the seats and the, the just justice. And now we've got... We're probably pushing well over 1,500 wolves. So, you know, we're we're pushing, you know, numerous times yeah, the multiple know. of what we should have. And yeah. now they're just trying to basically say, well, we're not going to go off of that anymore. Um, we're just going to say, you know, what do you, you – know, now, now it's 25, 30, 40 years later, and they're trying to make it more – but basically, you know, and Ted Nugent has talked about this, the wolf deserves more. As far as management, I know I'm ca- kind of going off on no, a no. Politi- political jag there, but yeah, um, and that is across the country. Now, if you go to Idaho, um, where ranchers are losing livestock out of it, yeah, they uh, even anywhere where wolves are and people are getting compensated for that, that's still not addressing the problem. That's no. not addressing management. Sprinkling sugar on a turd, <laughs> you're not going to get far with that. And to, the last thing I'll say on that is, is that like we're going to get to a point where. Like you said, like like Ted's saying, we have to give wolves the same amount of respect and attention that we give white-tailed deer in conservation and Why in wouldn't public. We? Exactly. They're part of nature. They all work hand-in-hand hand together. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? That's an yeah. excellent point because, you know, why? Because it's that whole <laughs> Disney uh, complex and the fact, oh, this is cute and we've give, we give them names and they look pettable and stuff and... We don't know they're ca- ca- carrying these cystic diseases. My God, did you see the comment that somebody made when I pointed that out last week? No. So basically, there's a disease that wolves carry. I know other canines carry it too. It's a cystic disease that you can basically get by just handling them. Oh. So, um, like, guys have been hunting them in the West legally. Yeah. And, and you see those posts on Facebook. Guy shoots a wolf and he's hugging it. Yeah. And those things are friggin' huge. Yeah. I mean, they're just like, taller than them. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like probably won't want to do this because the the foremost expert biologist on wolf uh ecology was uh dr val geist and he was from uh he was up by uh it's the the, the college is slipping my mind now is up in alberta okay and uh he passed away here recently within the past couple of years but um uh he lost his grandmother to this disease basically it's kind of like uh it's not a tapeworm, but it gets in, it gets inside you and cause it causes just a once it gets into your nervous system, it's over. Yeah, it, okay. it can be. It can be very deadly. Wow. We have it on our website, and of course, the name is the, the name of the disease is. It's probably a long word. It, it's a cystic disease, but right. anyways, I don't know why I got off on that. But b- basically, that is one thing to to keep in mind with that. But anyways, y- you don't think about that. You think about oh, it's it's a cute like dog like creature, right? Yeah. As opposed to a deer, as opposed to you know something ugly like a possum, but we don't care about those, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's so. I'm gonna just chime in here and say that in like modern cinema and television, I have seen wolves 
be depicted as these mysterious, like majestic, beautiful creatures, which they are. I am not saying they aren't. They just, they put them on this pedestal that is really hard to knock them down off of. And when you tell someone, you know, that wolves are a problem or this is a problem, you, you're met with a lot of backlash because of how, I don't want to say brainwashed, but like how manipulated society has been over the past 30 years with media and wolves it's it bad it is brainwashing yeah. and i am not against wolves yeah i am all about having a natural balance yeah and that's what leopold he uh fierce leopold, green fire that's what it was Le- all about leopold i'm sorry it that was his his whole thing is he was a government trapper down in arizona mm-hmm. and he was paid to kill wolves mm-hmm. and back then it was scorched earth kill them all yeah. you know and he's like well wait a second these things actually have they actually play a part in a sound healthy ecosystem right i'm for for that as well yeah but at some point you have to balance it right Right. uh okay so this goes back to the question you had uh earlier uh about how coyotes hunt wolves are completely different when they hunt deer yeah wolves are you can google this stuff and find it it is fascinating research they are so intelligent that basically um there was one study in the upper peninsula of michigan and they actually this was probably a couple decades ago but they what they did is they studied how wolves hunt deer yeah and how efficient they are on it it is mind-blowing so basically what they did baited sites baited hunting sites so in michigan there's a in other in the regular part of um, uh, lower peninsula there are lower michigan is uh place called club country lots of deer hunting camps and baiting is legal and um where wolves were in these areas in the places that were historically baited those wolves hunted those bait locations way better than you and i and like five of our buddies wanting to do a deer drive so what they did was i can't remember what the percentage was it was well over two-thirds so let's just say 70 to 80 percent efficiency what the wolves would do is they'd surround these bait sites with a pack of wolves yeah if a deer got past a certain point if it breached a certain point of that inner circle of like that let's say the circle was i don't know, x amount 100 yards around that bait site if the deer breached that circle it was dead wow because what they did is you know th- they were there were standers Mm-hmm. And basically, those wolves had every single. They knew the land. Obviously, yeah. they live on it. They had every escape route covered. If that deer got in there, especially if it was like a fawn or a yearling, it would nine times out of ten be dead by the by the time it. You know. It's it's fascinating. It, they identified the food source. They yep. knew where that deer was going, so they identified the travel routes and then plan their attack accordingly. Plan their attack. So it, it sounds like wolves are. Very, I mean, it's obvious that wolves are very smart, but they learn from each other and they learn from us. That's very interesting. Yeah, they <laughs> learn. Scary. They learn from each other, and, yeah. that, and that is that's their difference between them and, like, say, a coyote or a cat. Okay. Um, their intelligence is off the charts. Yeah. Um, next question, and I know I think I just led up <laughs> to it right there. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, how many deer do mountain lions mountain kill? Mountain lions kill because I was talking about cats. Yep. Cats are interesting in the fact I call them cats, mountain lions. Um, okay, I'm going to give you those stats here. The state with the most mountain lions. Um, gosh. Okay, if, if, gonna, I, if I say mountain lions, what do you think? I grew up in Kansas. We had a few there, but they weren't as big of a problem as they are, I know, out west. Yep. So I'm going to take a crack and say maybe Utah, Wyoming, some of those states. Uh, they're definitely there. Okay. Um, Wyoming's on the list, but it's farther down the list. It's like number one, two, three, f- I think four or five. Okay, so then my top um, state guess, I'd say... Probably Iowa. Is that too high up? No. Not even on the list. Ah, uh, I'm. Give I don't you know. One more chance. Okay. Mm. You're in Oklahoma. The right, you're in the right location of West. Nope, not Oklahoma. Okay. Okay. I'm going Midwest here. I'm gonna just say Montana. Montana's number two. Okay. Um, Montana and Oregon would be like Oregon two really? and three. They're not number one. Number one is Colorado. Colorado. Okay. Seven thousand uh, mountain lions, approximately. Um, and those other states, well, I think the populations are in the thousands. Yeah. I've experienced them in Wyoming. Okay. And this is all off of anecdotal, uh, you know, evidence from uh, guides that have been mostly Ralph Dampman over at Trophy Ridge Outfitters. He's just uh, just outside of Sundance. Yep. 
but they you you know you've been there. They yeah. they've killed mountain lions every year. But those mountain lions, um, first of all, answer your question. How many deer do mountain lions kill? We don't know the number. There's 14 states with what they would call sizable cat populations. And sizable could be anywhere from, you know, 500 to a couple thousand. Okay. You get to Colorado with the most with 7,000. Um, a cat has to kill a deer a week approximately to survive, and they will. Wow. So if you're looking at, um, you know, that's, you're looking at 50 deer a year. And, and correct me if I'm wrong cat. here, but cats, they're solo, right? They just travel yes. with their, their, pu- their cubs and that's it. Yeah, and extremely, uh, very stealthy. Okay. Um, Ralph has told me stories about how uh, one, a couple stories. One of the stories was, I don't know if he shared this with you or near there, but they were after this really nice buck. I think it was a 10-pointer, big buck. Oh, yeah. And he was taking the, the yeah. bow hunter in there, mm-hmm. and boom, the deer's dead. Yep. On the way to the stand, the deer's laying there dead, and he goes, he knew a cat had killed it. Yep. And the cat had covered it up or nothing yet. So they backed out, brought a cat hunter in because they had a guy with a, a cat tag, and they killed that cat that night. The, um, the other one was he has told numerous stories about how, you know, all those big rock, outcroppings there by devil's tower that we hunt by mm-hmm. yeah they would be walking along and he said you know you just get that feeling something's not right and you stop and you look and he said there'd be a cat you know a big friggin' mountain lion <laughs> yep just like a like a house cat sitting there going like that and then stopping and it's up on the, the rocks yep so they're extremely extremely stealthy yeah i mean you see all those videos on the internet of hikers being stalked and they didn't even realize it for like an hour and yeah very stealthy animal so when I looked at the numbers, um, estimated U.S. population of 60,000 mountain lions. So if we just, you know, yes, this is a rough, bigger than a bread box number. If you run those numbers, it's about 3 million deer a year that they kill. Which if is they like, had access to deer all the If time, they had access yeah. to deer, but they're killing other things. They're killing rabbits and right. squirrels or whatever else they can get their, their teeth on. Now um, that fact, one deer a week to survive, is that... Like just how much protein, is that how much food they need in terms of... Yeah, they'll eat the whole thing. They're kind of like, I mean, like you said, that's just if the opportunity exists. Right. And I'm just throwing a number out there to kind of give you, you know, what could it be? Is it necessarily 3 million deer? Could it be 2 million? Yeah. Yeah. Could it be a million and a half? Yeah, but it's it's well over what you think you are because most of those deer... I'm, I'm sorry, most of those cats are living where deer are, and there could be mule deer in there and other things. Yeah. Um, but there's other places like, uh, like you said, Utah, Arizona, uh, California has a bad, bad, bad cat problem. Um, do they allow hunting for mountain lions in California? I don't know if they do or no, not anymore. Somebody could maybe chime in and put a comment in the co- in the yeah comment section here. Yeah. I know they did. Bob, Rob used to live out there. Yeah. And in Northern California, they had some really great opportunities, but I, th- I don't believe you can anymore. Right. And that's why you see, and with other things in California, you're seeing, um, you're seeing really bad problems with coyotes and mountain lions and, and other things because you simply, you can't trap, you can't yep. hunt, you know, and that's what you're going to get. Yeah. My grandparents, they just moved to Arizona um, after retirement and... <laughs> My grandfather was sending me photos of coyotes going up to people on the streets. Oh my god! It's it's that bad there, and they don't allow trapping in in pretty much any parts of the county. Do you know what part of the state it's in? South of Phoenix. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. I I, I'm, I don't know the exact. So that's name probably place, in the middle between Phoenix and Tucson. I just remember getting a photo of a woman with her baby in her stroller and a coyote right behind that's them. Behind. And and it's like people there, you know, you can't. That that's I, I mean I could get on a whole other topic about that, mm-hmm. but you need something to defend yourself in that kind of area. If they're not going to allow trapping, I mean, like that's just and that's the thing that I always tell people is, you know, if you're a hunter, by all means, you know, like they say, if you see a coyote, should you sh- by all means shoot a coyote if you know if the opportunity comes up and you want to, absolutely, yeah. But uh, don't fool yourself to think that that's really doing much for management. The management side of things on any of these predators is trapping. Exactly. Trapper, we need trappers more today than ever. Yeah. And if you know a trapper or if there's trapping opportunities in your state or your area, support those guys. Yeah. Because those guys are doing a service that most, it's a thankless job, 
Um, it's not like they're doing it you know, because they're persecuted. They're doing it because that's a, a lifestyle, and it's a pretty cool one. But trapping is crucial. Right. Hunting's awesome. It helps. But, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the best analogy there is? Hmm. It's kind of like gun hunting and bow hunting. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. The bow hunters think, oh, we're managing these deer herds. No, you're not. The gun hunters are. The gun hunters are the big gun. Yeah. Uh, pun intended. They're the big hammer that's managing that state's deer herd. Yep. No matter what the bow hunters want to say. I love bow hunters. I love bow hunting. Statistically, though, ones. they are the Statistically, ones. Statistically, yeah. they're the one. The gun hunters are the ones who are carrying the weight. And trappers are the ones who are carrying the weight and managing uh, predator yeah. populations. Yeah. And, and, and even if you're, you know, you're a hunter right now and you're thinking about trapping, do it. Learn everything you can about trapping because it will make you a way better hunter. It will make you, I mean, your sentences, your senses will be heightened significantly out in the field. 100%. I, I 100% agree with that. And even if you're not going to get full into it where you're going to run a trap line, you can just do it on a small piece of property. You can, you can trap raccoons with a box trap. You yep. know, I mean, you can, and some things, I would encourage anybody to uh, attend a trapper education course, but um, some of the things like in, here in our state, if you own the land, you can tra- you, there's you can trap not everything, but I could trap coyotes and coons and fox and yeah, I can trap things on my own land. Yeah, and it's different um, for every state. Uh, yeah, there, and there's, you know, people are like, well, how do I get into it? And it's like you said, go to a trapper education course or Sky Good. We've had her on the podcast before, and she's got tons of great videos. She on really does. Have you, have you been following her oh, YouTube yeah. page? It's, yeah. She's got some great stuff. She's the real deal. There's some other great guys out there. Yep. Alan Probst. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's oh, done he, a we lot. We had him on the podcast. Awesome. I mean, just an awesome guy and awesome information. But I love to see, you mentioned the sky. Mm. I love to see some of the younger people, especially the women. Yeah. Um, really, uh, not just embracing the lifestyle because she did it her whole life, but not being afraid to say, this is my lifestyle. I'm not apologizing. Exactly. And take her shoes off and enjoy doing it. Barefoot. Yeah. Exactly. I, yeah. You know, my generation, I, and even before I got this job, it was so hard for me to understand the purpose of trapping because I, I was like, okay, I can get my head around hunting, conservation for, you know, deer herds and, you know, forest management and whatnot. That makes sense. And the same the same rules apply to trapping and all of those animals. The, the, the forests need to be managed in every aspect it can't just stop at deer it's got a you know raccoons skunks everything uh muskrats fishers all of that has a has you know has to find its balance in nature 100 percent agree and the other thing too is like i said on wolves it's not a scorched earth po- policy um basically you're just helping keep things in in perspective yeah and that that's our job is to is to do that and when you don't do that these you see what happens in california <laughs> you see what happens in places where they don't have it and it's chaos yeah and uh especially in these areas that are more uh human populated that that's and you're gonna you, you actually see it here in areas like suburban milwaukee suburban chicago suburban minneapolis where coyotes are running on picking off people's poodles and house cats and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. That's going to happen more. I've heard so many people also try to argue that that's not an issue right now. And I'm like, that's totally a issue. big issue right totally now. Totally an I've, issue. I mean, you know, just because it's not on Google doesn't mean that it's not happening in the world right now. And I, I mean, you just got to expand your search. Even, even in the Southern states like uh, Atlanta and places like that. Yeah. But thank goodness you got a lot of good old boys in, <laughs> yeah. in Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi and those Very places where you're happy. You, well, you don't have to worry. Those, they, they know how the, the real world works. Exactly. And um, so there's some benefits there. Hey, everybody. Want to take a quick break to thank Apex Outdoor Rewards for sponsoring this episode of Deer Talk Now. If you're not familiar with Apex Outdoor Rewards, it was founded on fair chase hunting and an overall passion for the outdoors. This spring, participating hunters have a chance to win big payouts in the 2023 Turkey Hunting Challenge. The 2023 challenge is currently available in 23 states and is set to provide new benefits for hunters like weekly giveaways, exclusive manufacturer discounts, and Apex Partner Contingency Rewards. Signing up is really easy. Just go to apexoutdoorrewards.com, create your own account, and then pick the state that you're going to be hunting in. I am personally excited to follow along 
and see the leaderboards. See who's bagged the biggest gobblers. And I wish good luck to everybody out there. Again, just go to apexoutdoorrewards.com for more information. The next one actually was one of the ones you had from before. Oh, yeah. That was actually your first thought. Yep, this was my first. This was my, I thought this was what killed the most deer in the United States. Um, How many deer die from car accidents every year? Car accidents. This is interesting because this is a topic that I've studied since 1996 that I can remember specifically um, when I really started expanding the Deer Hunter's Almanac because back then states gave really good data um they they've given us really good data on harvests so if you get the almanac that's going to be the only plug i'm going to tell you for today and we'll put the link in the comments because we've got the new one out but in that almanac we've done it every year since 1992 we put in the archery harvest the gun harvest and the overall harvest for every state so it's kind of like your it's almost like your baseball almanac it's got all the statistics in there we used to keep track of car accident info and um you know how people kind of like farmed rocks <laughs> about <laughs> that's a rock farmer comment that's going to probably go over most people's heads but um it was it was uh basically they would say oh the insurance companies are controlling the states and they're the ones who are lobbying to kill all these deer well they used to we used to get really good data on how many car deer accidents were every year in various states. Well, we don't get that anymore. Um, it's very hard to find, and it's very hard to put your finger on. If you look at just reportable data, the best I can come up with right now is, I believe, I was going to say 2.1 million. It is. About 2.1 million deer are killed by cars every year. Wow. But the caveat there is those are only the ones that are reported. <laughs> so, like, you hit a deer... Yeah. You kill it and then you turn in the auto claim. Yeah. Um, that's how they're getting those numbers. So if I were to just hit a deer, eh, it's not that bad and just keep driving. They, I or mean, it could be way more. It ran one bounced off your car and it ran off. Yeah. And yep. it, it doesn't mean you actually had to recover the deer, but you, you might not have reported it. How many people hit deer that don't report it? Because it's like, I don't want to make a claim. Yeah. Because I want my insurance to go up. It really didn't wreck anything. Right. But you know, you've, you've you center punch that thing in the guts. Yeah. And you know, have you ever field dressed a auto kill deer? I have not, but I can imagine oh. it is like a blender. It's a blender. Okay. <laughs> and I said this, I don't know if I said it on the podcast. I said it to somebody here recently. I've done three or four in my time here and I'll never do it again. And that's no offense to anybody who knows how to, or, you know, some really good, self butchers out there yeah who can salvage a backstrap who i was with dan small actually okay because dan actually (laughs) was telling the story it was on the podcast he was telling you know if you can salvage a backstrap or if you can salvage a ham or whatever you know that's good meat it's like i agree but back then i guess i was young i was probably your age yeah and i and i was still in the mentality i'll get back to the your main question (laughs) no no no, it's fine the story here but um I was in the mentality that like, oh, you cut your deer out and you wash it out and then you skin it. Well, my gosh, it was, <laughs> it was the nastiest, grossest thing. Okay, yeah. another sidebar here. Okay, <laughs> so I was young. Yeah, I, I was young and single. I hit this deer, and I was living in an apartment here in town. I had just got my job here, and I haven't told this story to too many people, so I don't know how far this is going to go. But um, there was a really really pretty gal that lived above me and i hope she's not listening to this podcast or doesn't even know who i am anymore. she is not, i don't know her name <laughs> actually, actually i do but i'm not gonna say and um i really wanted to ask her out but i was so shy i didn't want to ask her out so i was heading to work uh, uh from uh where i was living in my apartment to the old offices and kaboom this deer comes over the bridge and it goes underneath my truck and i hit it and it's a huge doe Giant yeah, and it's probably I don't know. It's like September. Oh no, it's this big, beautiful doe. Yeah, and sitting there kicking in the back. Well, cop pulls up immediately. He's right outside of town and gives me the tag. I throw it in my truck. I take it back to my apartment. You know how you have, when you live in an apartment, and you got the little garage. Yeah, separate. Yeah. There's like twelve garages all attached together. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I'm like, well, I gotta get this thing out. I gotta get to work. <laughs> oh no. So I pull, <laughs> I pull a big tarp and lay it on the floor. <laughs> And I opened that thing up, and you said a blender. Did it just all pour out? Oh, good Lord. It was horrible. (laughs) So here I am. 
I've got the gunning gloves up to my shoulders. Got, and it just, I, I'm trying to be as discreet about this as possible, but it friggin' reeks. Oh, no. And I'm in this little apartment thing, and it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. I hear this click, 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 <laughs> click, click. Well, here comes that gal dressed to the nines with heels on. And I just hear, oh, my God. You know, she goes past <laughs> the door of the garage. Yeah, yeah. Uh. And that was the last time I think she's ever looked at me or talked to me. Yeah, I'd probably ever wanted to look at another deer ever again. Traumatized Never want to look life. at another deer. And yeah. I, I, what I did was, so I, <laughs> I processed the deer. I didn't, or I didn't, I didn't process it. I, I feel I gutted it, hung it up. I was in no position to butcher that thing. I didn't have any equipment or anything. Didn't have a freezer, nothing. So I take it to the local butcher. Oh yeah, we'll take care of that for you. Yeah. That, that burger smelled. Oh, man. Uh. That wasn't the last one I did, but I've done other ones, and it was like, I guess what I need to do is preface it, because I know some people are watching this or listening to this, and they're going to say, oh, I do, I do them all the time. Yeah. You just have to lower your expectations as to what you're going to get back. You're not getting 50 pounds of meat out of a 100-pound right. deer. Yeah, but food is still food. Any you might bit? get 10 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Like I said, I was actually, we are talking with Dan about that. I was like, you might get 10 or 15, 20 pounds of burger out of it. Yeah. 10 or 15 20 pounds of burger that you're not paying whatever it is at the store exactly and you didn't have to spend a bullet or an arrow or a broadhead no. to get it and just you know maybe a broken headlight okay so that was a separate <laughs> uh approximately we're gonna just say two million probably a lot more than that yeah um and um oh most of the accidents are i think we know that but through data most of them are, are in fawning season so you're looking at between uh coming up here pretty soon uh, april and say july and then again in fall and like and people think oh because it's the rut that has something to do with it but more uh that we found out over research is through deer dispersal in fall because those young deer are dispersing so like uh fawns and yearling bucks so fawns uh from well, i should say from last year or like um there is a certain time during the pre-rut when the doe kicks her fawns away just momentarily yeah but the bigger ones would be those yearling bucks from those yearling deer so the fawns from last year they're crossing they're 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 dispersing to new habitats so they're crossing new roads they're going to new territories they're getting pushed around by other deer so that is going to be um basically lead to more travel right so they're going to be going like i said crossing roads they've never crossed behind before and boom they get hit by a car yeah so those are the those are the big ones and i know we've wow. got we've got one more and i think I was just, i'll just give it to you here yeah um I think when we look at this, okay, how many deer do wolves kill, do lions kill, do cars kill, do bears kill? How many deer do people kill? <laughs> I'm going to ask you. I know because I've got it written down. Okay. Um, like hunters. Hunters. I've, oh, so I'm going to just tell you. we got. Th I think I actually said it. I give it away. But we've got about 30 million deer in the yep. United States. So how many of those deer get shot every year? Uh Okay, I'm gonna off the top of my head, based off of what I know with Wisconsin hunter populations and Minnesota, I think in the United States I'd say somewhere like five million in a year, Pretty probably close. Yeah. six million. Six million, Pro okay. approximately six million, and that equates to approximately two hundred thousand tons of venison. Oh my gosh! And a lot of that's getting donated. A lot of it gets donated, yeah. and we've got those numbers too. I can't, I don't remember those off the top of my head because I don't have them written down here. Yeah. Um, but uh, the number. The amount of venison being donated is at record highs. Wow. So the other thing that I would uh, editorialize here is even if you're not giving it to your state program, like we've got a great program here. You can just take the deer, go like this, and they take it and they process it. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, if you have a program like that and you are blessed enough to be able to hunt and harvest more than one deer and you're not going to use it, or even if you want to give a portion, I would encourage people to do that. But also, just enc I encourage people to give it to family, friends, yeah, people who might not eat venison. I just gave some to a, a family friend who's a college student this year, never ate venison. He wanted to try it, and I said, here you go. Here's 20 pounds. Oh, he's going to be eating good for a while. Yeah. A yeah. yeah. little bit of everything. Stay and give him some good stuff, you know, some steaks. Some back straps. Back some straps. Lines, yeah. Tell him how to cook it. Don't overcook it. Have it medium rare and... The uh, initial reports really, really liked it. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, hunters kill six million. That thirty million population number that ebbs and flows. I've seen it as high as thirty-two million. I've seen it as low as like twenty-six, twenty-eight million. But you know, you're, it, it is kind of an educated guess. Yeah, across the country with 
I always do repeat 42 states yeah. with, you know, there are deer in more states than 42, but 42 that have pretty predictable, reportable deer harvests. Wow. That's 6 million is, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good number to have. And it's, it's, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you think that we're going to see that increase or decrease in the coming years? I think it's going to be stable. That's a good question because when you look at um, pre-settlement times, so yeah. like when people first, when, when okay, I don't know what the politically right. We're not going to get into that, but yeah. yeah when, <laughs> when people came from other places to, to this America, country, yeah. there was about 38 million deer. But if you look at, they, they say it could have been 38, 40 million. Let's just say 40 million. So right. a, a little bit more than we have now, but they didn't have all these cities, mm-hmm. right? They didn't have all these highways. And there was a lot more habitat. I mean, there was a lot more native habitat. and But you also had other things, like you had bison and you had antelope and you had other animals at, at, uh, at much higher levels. Right, and those them. predators were preying on those other animals. And like you said, yeah. the pressure of the asphalt jungle, you know, cities and stuff Huge. like that. Yeah, that's – it. I mean, right now we're at a point where I, f- I think – we're seeing this huge shift in balance and we're trying to find a way to keep everything level with the cities and predators. And it's, it's all very political, (laughs) very political. Yeah. Um, but, uh, to further answer your question where it's not gonna, if you took hunting away completely, yeah, you'd have a problem. Yeah. Um, but would it become what basically what it would become? Let's just say play devil's advocate. Let's say you took deer hunting away completely would uh, deer populations skyrocket? Yes, but would they crash then? Yes, and it's kind of it's going to be, and it would be a very unhealthy situation. And it's kind of like the situation that you have in California. It's kind of a, almost like a microcosm look of like with predators, because if you if you have no hunting, if you have no trapping, you're going to have an increase of that animal. Yeah, and now these things are going to start dying of disease. There's going to be a, an imbalance in the ecosystem. You have problems with your forests. Yeah. Like if you took if you took away hunting and deer were just decimated, our forests already are, in some places. Um, I don't want to see say forever change, but they are because in areas where that had historically high deer populations over the past century. Overbrowse, 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 overbrowse. Now you've got all these non-native shrub species, plant species, growing up that have taken over these forests. Yeah. Could that be reversed? Yes, but in our lifetime, no. No, and, 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 and a lot of these places, we've seen that. Like, like people 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago were planting tons of forest to. Like, it was the forestry boom right after the whole lumberjacking thing. I, I mean. Those forests are still here today, but we've pretty much like I don't want to say decimated, but you know we've we have changed. Deer have them. S- deer have changed it um, yeah. in certain areas. Yeah. Um, but what uh, if I had a crystal ball view? I would say the deer population. I believe for my lifetime, your lifetime, my kids' lifetime is going to be pretty stable. Yeah. Uh, is there something looming over us? Chronic wasting disease? No, I don't think so. Yep. Um. EHD? No, I don't think so. Climate change? No, I don't think so. If, yeah. if climate change was going to make a difference on a deer population, uh, on a nationwide deer population, I think we would see it with something more like um, uh, EHD than we would with chronic wasting disease. That's just my opinion, knowing what I know. Right. Could, could things change? Sure. But we have yet to get any really tangible... Um, forecasted outlooks yeah there, there, some people are saying they'll, they'll point to a couple very small studies and say oh this could completely wipe out our deer population it hasn't in wyoming right there's more deer we talked to mark kaiser there's more whitetails in wyoming than there were 25 years ago um in certain um pockets and regions are they affected yes but the, you can't we have yet to see any signs that pinpoints anything off of a disease. Right. So if we're going to just, but basically, again, I, I know I keep saying this to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long um, answer. I uh, like it though. Uh, but the over the broad view is, um, I think in 50 years, you're still going to be looking at 30 million white tails in the United States. Right. Regardless of what happens. Yeah. I know. I, I, I'm young. I don't know much, but I know enough to know that 
Al Gore said New York would be underwater in 2019, and it isn't. <laughs> it so isn't. I think I think. Uh, so I'm not going to make any of those yeah, wild predictions. Exactly. That we're going to be uh, devoid of deer. Exactly. In, in yeah. ten years. Yeah. So okay, one question to kind of wrap everything up here, and I thought of this while we were talking. In your mind's eye, besides the wolf, what do you think is the most problematic predator on this list that we talked about today? Because we got coyotes, uh, wolves mountain lions black bears boy uh overall i don't think you can pinpoint one okay um if you have i think you can pinpoint any one of them in a regional setting yeah i think you can pinpoint uh black bears in numerous places right um problematic i guess it's what your view is um i think you're going to look at places that have low deer densities and once those deer densities get to a certain level that predator is going to either you know it's going to shift and you find that with wolves right um from a hunting aspect i feel for the guys and gals who are hunting in these areas and have done it historically throughout their families where they're being affected Mm -hmm. their hunting's being affected yeah if you've never hunted a, a population of a single digit deer density bless your heart because i have and it sucks i mean it's hard (laughs) and to does that mean that woe is me no but if i was the guy who spent a ton of money yeah on that land and now i'm hunting a a, a, in region that's got eight deer per square mile and i'm getting more pictures of gray wolves than i am deer Oof, I yeah. mean, I feel I feel bad for those guys, and yeah. I know a lot of guys that are like that. Yeah, and it, you talk to them; they've seen it change. Their parents watched it change. They They're watched it change. change, and they yeah. actually maybe got into it, like you said, at the cusp of when, you know, you had forest regenerating when they were logged heavily yeah. in the '40s and the '50s, and you had awesome deer hunting. It's like, yeah, I want to take part in that, and now it's uh, and it's terrible. Right. And now you've got political issues where they won't they're they're not doing vast logging and stuff, but. Um, What's the word? I, I don't think there is a bad one. I just think most of it is predicated off of politics yeah, and um, how they're being managed right? in, yeah. in local little areas. Would you say that the wolf is the, the northern wolf is the equivalent to the southern black bear in the sense that they are both wreaking havoc on ecosystems? Um, and our lack of... I would say them. it's probably actually, if you have to use that example, um, just be using that Florida example of black bears and maybe parts of the Carolinas, uh, it's, yeah, it might be close. Yeah. If you're looking at that and just say um, the upper Great Lakes with, with timber wolves, yeah. it's probably pretty close. I think the bear situation might be a tad worse Yeah. because, well, I don't know. I, that's a good question, Ian, because... Um, they're both similar in the fact that right now there's no management on black bears and right now there's no management on gray wolves. There was, we had a couple little windows there where we had a season yeah, last and year. those trappers were just insanely efficient mm-hmm. and that helped. It's almost like they knew <laughs> that they were there. It's almost like they had months of photos, years of mm-hmm. photos to kind of figure those out guys what they're doing. Were insanely good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They were insanely good. And the guys that did it with hounds too were insanely good. Great question. You stumped me. I, I can't pick one. Okay. I can't well, pick one. I, I was only asking because I, going forward, when I, as someone who's very young and can speak to a younger audience, I want to know how to educate people on this issue because wolves and black bears is a huge issue. The education states. basically is they need to be managed. Right. Right. You know, we have to have a management plan in place mm-hmm. and we have to put all of our political skews aside right. and say this is our management plan and we can't just relocate them to isle royale <laughs> no <laughs> that's not gonna work that won't work we learned they yeah. you know they, they we know the bears move forever uh, i could go off on some yeah pages. yeah <laughs> we don't have one, to. one 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 quick one there was another local one we had a black bear a giant black bear that was wreaking havoc in the hardy's dumpster here. oh yeah did i tell you this story? in wapaka yep yes and they relocated that thing to Eau Claire, which is a couple hundred miles from here. And by the end of the summer, it was back. Yep. And then they had to... Intelligent creatures. They had to off it. Yeah. But, uh, that is was, so intelligent. Yeah. I mean, just made it, made its way all the way back to that Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. 
Junior bacon cheeseburger and the fries with the horse radish. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking we're. I think we got our restaurants mixed up. (laughs) Well, maybe we did. I don't know. That's fascinating, though. Yeah. So is that a wrap? I think that might be a wrap. This was fun. I I really enjoyed this. But to to uh, piggyback on your comment about uh, any younger viewers listening to this, if you're new to it, or you just like, what can you do? Number one, become educated. Number two, um, like we said, embrace embrace and don't alienate yourself from fellow people in our community whether they're trappers or hunters or whatever and um yeah no, you know number three um just insist on science-based management yeah and nothing else yeah science-based management of the wildlife resource they're they're natural resources that need to be managed yeah is that it i think that's it i we think did i covered it. i think going forward i Every day I'm at work, I always come out of here feeling like I know more than I did the, the day before. But I know that I'm going to run into someone talking about this in public, and I'll be able to give them some good insight on that. So. Awesome. All right. Well, for Ian Sanchez, I am Dan Schmidt. Thank you once again for joining us for Deer Talk Now. We drop these every Thursday afternoon live, so you can catch them wherever you're listening to a podcast or watching them on YouTube, Facebook, and other places. Until next week, we'll catch you again for Deer Talk Now. The Deer Talk Now podcast is also brought to you by Full Range Mounting Systems. These mounting systems are a great way to manage all of your mounts in a stylish and organized manner. We are using their pedestal mount here on the podcast set for two shoulder mounts, and it looks just awesome. Be sure to check out all their mounting solutions at fullrangesystems.com. And finally, Deer Talk Now is brought to you by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. Hey, if you've watched me on Deer and Deer Hunting TV, you know that I'm an equal opportunity bow hunter. And for most of the past decade, that has also included crossbows. In fact, I shot my first crossbow deer with a 10 point over 12 years ago. And to say that I've been impressed with their technology is an understatement. This year, I'm shooting the new Nitro 505 the fastest crossbow in the world. It is light, compact, and includes the revolutionary AccuSlide cocking and decocking technology. Whether I'm in a tree stand, ground blind, or spot and stalk hunting, I know the Nitro 505 is up to any challenge. Check one out at a dealer near you or log on to 10pointcrossbows.com for more information.